last year when we graphed trig functions, we really just did the basic ones. And it was just for 0 to 360. But there are many other trig functions that we can use. Of course, we're now interested in radians rather than degrees as well. So let's have a look at our sine curve. We know the basic sine curve, amplitude of 1. And I usually mark off the boundary values every 90 degrees, which means pi on 2 radians. So I'm just labelling every pi there. Now when I draw a sine curve, I know I start at the origin, and then a sine curve will go up, and then that pattern will continue. So it will then go down and up, down and up, down and up, and then out the other way, and then we join it. Whee. And there's the basic curve y equals sine x. All right. Now, domain or real x, range in between minus 1 and 1. Okay. Now, to generalize it, the things we need to know, the period of the curve, which is how long until it repeats, how long until you're back at the same position, but traveling in the same direction. Because you could say at pi I'm at zero, at two pi I'm on zero, but it hasn't taken pi to repeat because you're traveling in a different direction. At pi you're going down, at two pi you're going up. So two pi is the period. And amplitude is just its distance from the axis. So to generalize it, we'll put a coefficient out the front and uh, we'll put a coefficient in front of the x as well. There might be some shift happening with the curve. So we'll put a plus c in there. The period will always be 2 pi divided by whatever the coefficient of x is. So 2 pi and b. And the amplitude will always be the coefficient of the trig function. There's another thing I tend to work out, and that's divisions. And I say, I like to mark off the boundary values. And for a standard curve, that's pi on 2. So the way to work out where to mark off my divisions is whatever the period turns out to be, I'm going to divide that by 4. And that's what I'll, I'll mark off. So I can pretty much draw the same curve every single time. All I've got to do is just change the scale, so change the label of those particular points. If there is a shift happening, it would be C over B, because remember the shift is when it's factorised with the X. So if it's bx plus c, factorising that with the x would be b outside of x plus c on b. So the actual shift would be c divided by b. So let's draw this one. 5 sine 9x minus pi on 2. So let's work out how to set up my axes. The period of this one is 2 pi on 9. The amplitude is 5. I'm going to mark off my divisions then as a period divided by 4. So I'm going to mark them off every pi on 18. And we have got a shift happening here. Conveniently, it happens to be pi on 18. That was lucky. So I'll draw it in. So when I mark off my axes, I put in the amplitude, 5 and minus 5. Put in my divisions as normal, but I just change the scale. So now we've got pi on 9. 2 pi on 9, because remember, each of those divisions is pi on 18. I'm just labelling every second. Now I've just got to draw it. Normally, I would start at the origin for a sine curve. But this one is shifted pi on 18 to the right. So the first point I put in is pi on 18 to the right. And then I just remember the pattern of the sine curve. So I'll go up, and then down, and then same to the other way, and draw in. My sine curve. There it is. Basically the same curve. I've just changed the um, divisions. One thing to point out. If this question had said, draw from, for a domain of minus pi on 9 to 2 pi on 9, this curve would be wrong. Because I've gone past those endpoints. It's just that it's really hard in PowerPoint to get that curve happening unless I go past the point. If they haven't specified a domain, well, it doesn't really matter. Okay, cosine. And you remember, the cosine of the sine curve is basically the same. So generalise it, a cos bx plus c. Period will still be 2 pi on b. Amplitude will still be a. Uh, I'll still mark off divisions, period on 4. And the shift will still be similar. Basically exactly the same. So I'm going to draw, oh, 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 look at this one. 
minus 4 cos x on 8 plus pi, and all of that plus 2. All right, so what's happening with this one? Period, 2 pi on 1 eighth, so 16 pi is the period. The amplitude is 4. Divisions, period divided by 4, so every 4 pi I'm going to mark off. There is a shift happening. 8 pi to the left, but also 2 up. Oh, and it's upside down because it's a negative as well. Oh, we've got everything happening in this curve. Let's draw it up. Okay, there's my axis. But remember, this curve is shifted up two. So I'm just going to draw in a horizontal at two so I know it's going to wind around y equals two. The amplitude is, where is it? Four. So four above two is six. Four below is negative two. My divisions, I said I'm going to mark off every four pi. Okay. Normally, for a cosine curve, I would start up at the peak. So it'll be naught up at the peak. But what are we doing with this one? We're shifting it up to, so I'm now going to start at 6. But then it's 8 pi to the left. So I'm now going to start at negative 8 pi and at 6. But it's upside down. So I'm now going to start over at negative 8 pi, negative 2. And then the next division will go to the axis, and then we'll go up and down, and we'll just follow the flow of a cosine curve. It's just that particular one. Well, we can't do sine and cos without doing tan. We shall generalise this one. A tan BX plus C. The period, remember tan, has half the period. So the normal tan curve is um, pi or 180. So this one will be pi on B instead of 2 pi on B. So we've got to watch out for that. Now, the divisions for this one will be the period divided by 2 instead of the period divided by 4. Because yeah, if you think of the important features of your tan curve, because everything's enclosed, we basically, when we plotted it, if you remember, it goes x-intercept asymptote, x-intercept asymptote. X -intercept. Uh, you'll notice I didn't worry about amplitude, because with a tan curve, well, it doesn't really have an amplitude. It just goes from minus infinity up to infinity. Ah, uh, we could still have a shift. So what one are we going to draw? Oh, look at the coefficient, e. e tan pi x minus 2 pi. So what do we got here? The period will be pi divided by pi. So the period is just 1. I'm going to mark off every half. My shift is 2 to the right. So let's draw in our axis. So every half I'm marking in there. Okay, 10. Normally starts at the origin, but this one is shifted 2 to the right. So I'll start at 2. And as I was saying, this one just alternates. X intercept asymptote, X intercept asymptote. So let's put those in. There's the asymptote on the right hand side, left hand side, asymptote, X intercept, asymptote, X intercept. And now we draw in our tan curve. Now the E is going to make it steeper. But as I don't have a scale on the y-axis, it doesn't really matter. I can draw any tan curve I like, because there's no scale there. There's the basic branch. Remember, when you come through, it's at 45 degrees of the tan curve. It's, it's not a cubic. Complete that. So there's e tan pi x minus 2 pi, 14c.